Are you considering using Ozempic to stop binge eating? Well, before you make that decision, it's crucial for you to understand the potential hidden dangers. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the biological impact of Ozempic on your body and why it might not be the best solution to help you stop binge eating. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell in the corner so you're notified every time I publish a new video about binge eating, emotional eating, and how you can live with food freedom. I'm Meredith McKenzie. I'm a binge eating therapist, intuitive eating coach, and the founder of the One Body to Love program. I've helped hundreds of women to break the binge restrict cycle and to learn to eat intuitively. Ozempic is generically known as semaglutide, and it was approved in 2017 by the US Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, for use in adults with type 2 diabetes. Ozempic and semaglutide are a class of medicines called glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1, agonist, which means that it acts as though it is like the naturally occurring GLP-1 and binds to the receptor sites within our bodies. What this does is it triggers the release of additional insulin and helps reduce the blood sugar levels within the body. Bigger picture, Ozempic works by helping the pancreas to increase the levels of insulin that it's creating to decrease the levels of sugar that the liver releases and slowing down the movement or the rate of passage through the body that food makes and helping you to feel full longer. This helps lower the blood sugar levels of the body over a longer period of time and is related to a decrease in risk of major cardiovascular events. I don't think anyone can deny how amazing Ozempic and semaglutides have been for the population of people who are struggling with type 2 diabetes. However, they have now been popularized to be used for other off-label situations. In the last few years, Ozempic has gained massive popularity for use for weight loss, including people who struggle with binge eating. And that's the area that I'm going to be focusing on today. I want to be very tentative and careful in what I talk about today because I don't want my personal opinion to necessarily be impacting anyone's decision. So this is where I'm going to jump in with my quick disclaimer. This video is for educational and informational entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as a replacement for any kind of assessment, evaluation, or treatment of anyone. I also need to acknowledge my personal bias as a binge eating therapist, working with clients day in and day out, seeing what they struggle with, seeing the before and after use of some of these medications and how Ozempic can impact their lives as they're going through binge eating treatment, as they're dealing with the coming off of Ozempic in the future. I have my opinions. In this community, I've heard different things and I just wanna be very careful and acknowledge the bias that I have so that as you're watching this, you have that information in the back of your mind. As a society and within the binge eating community, we have seen numerous medications represented over the years and giving promises for weight loss and recovery from binge eating. And we know that they don't hold up to their promises and end up with long-term consequences. So I'm skeptical. I'm also concerned that the uprising of Ozempic and similar medications really promotes this idea that living in a larger body is wrong and that there is something inherently wrong with having fat on your body. And this is not something that I subscribe to at all and something that I really try to help repair with my clients, but it's incredibly difficult when our entire society is pushing this ideal. Just doing the research for this video and coming across legitimate scholarly articles for it, the word anti-obesity was cited multiple times. And knowing that that wording in particular is a part of the underlying mentality of the treatment that the clients that I'm working with are receiving from the medical practices that they're a part of is just very, very disheartening. Saying all this, I know that I'm gonna get lots of comments on this video about how weight loss is necessary for health and being in a certain weight range is necessary for health. So I'm gonna save my explanation that I've given multiple times and redirect you to my Health at Every Size playlist right here. Now on to the potentially dangerous hidden consequences of taking Ozempic. The first one is the common and the not so common but quite serious side effects of taking this medication. Understandably, Ozempic is intended to help you reduce your blood sugar, but it can result in dangerously low blood sugar and all of the consequences that come along with that, as well as upset stomach, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, loss of appetite, diarrhea, constipation, a runny nose, sore throat, symptoms of a stomach flu, headaches, dizziness, and tiredness. 
These are pretty common side effects. And from what I've seen online anecdotally and in talking with my clients, it seems like they are pretty common that at least in the beginning, as you're ramping up to using the medication, that it's pretty common that you're going to have some of those symptoms and they're not pleasant. Unfortunately, the value placed on weight loss and living in a thinner body is quite high. And so some people will say, you know what, I will take those side effects and I will be fine with them. However, we also have to think how that impacts a person's quality of life their ability to go out and do things every day, their energy levels, their motivation, and to feel physically ill in your body on a daily basis is quite consuming. There are a series of more serious side effects that may impact a person. And if you have any of these symptoms or you know someone who's taking Ozempic and they have these symptoms, it's important that they see a medical doctor right away. These include vision changes, unusual mood changes, thoughts about hurting yourself, pounding heartbeat, feeling lightheaded, signs of a thyroid tumor, symptoms of pancreatitis, gallbladder problems, low blood sugar, kidney problems, and symptoms of stomach paralysis. It's important to recognize that these symptoms can also be incredibly triggering for anyone who has an eating disorder past. If they have struggled with bulimia and purging, that these gastrointestinal symptoms of vomiting, nausea, diarrhea can be very triggering and mimic the binge purge cycle and what somebody is experiencing and can really set somebody back in their recovery. Another risk of Ozempic that I do not hear talked about nearly enough, particularly with the clients that I work with in my practice who are seeking out the support from their medical professionals, it seems to be seen as this cure-all wonderful drug and the consequences that are likely to happen down the line of rebound weight gain. And on the outset, the down the line repercussions and potential of rebound weight gain just seem so out of sight. And the promise that Ozempic comes with of weight loss with less struggle and to be able to do that and finally feel that experience of weight loss that you might be struggling with and have struggled with for many, many years can really skew your perspective on the potential danger of it. We don't have a lot of data of what long-term Ozempic use looks like and what coming off of Ozempic looks like. A number of the clients that I work with in my practice who are using Ozempic currently, they're experiencing the weight loss side effects of it. However, we are actively working on the mental health aspects of what weight gain could look like for them down the line when they stop taking the medication. There is no promise that when you go off of Ozempic that the weight loss side effects are going to be permanent or that they're going to stick around. When you stop taking the medication that the appetite suppressing properties are going to stick around. And so we expect, as we have seen many times before with these type of medications that help with suppressing appetite and slowing down food digestion and helping with weight loss, that rebound weight gain is a natural side effect. Your hunger levels are going to increase. You are going to be able to eat what you were eating previously, and it's more likely that you are going to regain weight. I'm going to direct you to my video here on why diets don't work because we have seen it time and time again. When we suppress what our body takes in nutritionally, whether it is intentionally through a diet with cognitive exercises such as that, or with a medication, we are depriving the body of the nutrients that it needs. The body is naturally going to reduce thermogenesis, which is its internal fire, its combustion of the energy, and ultimately slow down your metabolism. What ends up happening then when you stop taking the medication is we expect that you are going to gain weight back. And for a lot of people, they gain even more weight back after that because the metabolism is slowed down so much. The changes that happen with your eating behaviors are as a result of taking this medication. It's a response to the symptoms that you're feeling on Ozempic. It's not a genuine behavior change in terms of coping any differently. And so we can expect that most likely you're going to continue with those behaviors after you stop taking the medication, which will lead to weight gain. Now, I want to hear from you. I am not personally on Ozempic or any of the other similar medications. If you are, let us know in the comment section down below, what has your experience been like and what is the support been like that you've been receiving from either your medical professionals or a therapist about 
how you're going to come off this medication eventually. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Another hidden danger that I really want you to consider is that using Ozempic or a similar medication does not address the underlying concerns for why you binge eat. There are definitely a plethora of research studies that have now been produced on how binge eating episodes are significantly reduced once you've started Ozempic. However, it doesn't actually change the underlying psychological, behavioral, mental health concerns that might be contributing to why you binge eat. So we can predict with high probability that when you stop taking Ozempic, that all of those behaviors, all of those reasons are gonna be coming back and you will continue to binge eat. One of the benefits of Ozempic that I have seen discussed many, many times, and it's seen as this wonderful experience, is that it reduces the person's experience of something called food noise or the chatter in their heads, the draw, the eagerness, the, the seeking of food. While I can absolutely understand that that would be a very welcomed experience and the relief of that must be so great for someone who struggles with binge eating, it doesn't address what is truly going on for that person. The food noise exists for a reason, and there's many of those reasons that I work with on my clients on that are not getting addressed while you are taking Ozempic. Many people will describe when taking Ozempic that their hunger cues simply are not there, that they have to almost mechanically eat. And because of that, they don't eat past fullness. They sometimes don't eat too much at all and they feel completely satiated. This is not a typical experience. Our hunger and fullness cues are necessary. And yes, when someone struggles with binge eating, absolutely hunger and fullness are something that they can struggle with often but there are things that we can work on with that. And that's why we want somebody to be able to attend to their hunger, to attend to their fullness, and to be able to truly get those cues from their body so that they can change their behavior around those cues. By dampening and shutting down those cues, it loses all the opportunity for us to be able to work on attending to what the body truly needs and to eat intuitively. Instead, we're eating according to cues that simply aren't there. So instead of dealing with the root cause of binge eating, Ozempic is actually just a way of avoiding or pushing aside any of the underlying causes or reasons that a person might binge eat. Ultimately, that means that these issues aren't addressed and it's just going to perpetuate the eating disorder behavior for a longer time. Another hidden danger that I am quite concerned about for my clients is the societal pressure for thinness that they're going to experience. Even just the existence of Ozempic and that is now being prescribed off-label for weight loss rather than just use for individuals with type 2 diabetes perpetuates that idea that living in a smaller body is better, there is more value in thinness, and that if you live in a larger body that you are to blame for that and that you should be always striving to be losing weight. And we know from many, many years of research that this type of body image concern really just only perpetuates and leads to a disordered and unhealthy relationship with food and how we see ourselves in our bodies. The more we see our bodies and food as the enemy, the more likely we are unfortunately to engage with those things in an unhealthy way. And so I have a big concern for anyone who might be prescribed Ozempic when they're struggling with binge eating, that that is only going to perpetuate that idea that they should be losing weight, that they aren't worthy in their current body, and is only going to make their perception of themselves and their body worse. As we know, going off the medication is highly likely to result in weight gain. And what does that mean for anybody, but particularly anybody who already struggles with an eating disorder or binge eating disorder? to gain weight, are they now going to be at the mercy of anybody who has judgment about their bodies and their perception of how hard that person tried? Is that blame for that person gonna be even higher? And what is that experience for the individual gonna be like? Now, my final concern, and this is one that I have heard talked about online quite a bit, is that taking Ozempic over a long period of time is simply not sustainable for the majority of people. According to the research that I have done, currently physicians have been told and advised that there is no time limit for how long somebody can take Ozempic as long as their body is tolerating it well. However, that has not been the experience that I've seen in practice, that there is a goal time usually maybe 18 months, two years of taking this medication, if again, it's tolerated well. 
And in many cases, it's not tolerated well. How long can a person have diarrhea and nausea and vomiting and the gas and the bloating and all of the other side effects? And those are just the common, not so serious ones. If you were to have serious consequences of taking Ozempic, that would also be a concern and most likely make you a candidate for not taking it over a long period of time. On top of that, it can cost up to a thousand dollars per month to be taking Ozempic. We already know individuals with type 2 diabetes who are required to take insulin and other medications to help with their diabetes. It can be quite costly and this is just adding to that cost for those individuals. Plus it also demonstrates how highly valued living in a thin body is if someone is expected to be paying that much per month. So those are the main concerns that I have at this time, and I just wanna summarize them again for you. One is that there are some pretty common and serious side effects of taking Ozempic that would impact your day-to-day -day life. Second is that rebound weight gain is likely to occur, and that will add most likely to the perception that you have of yourself as failure of the weight gain. It also doesn't address the underlying concerns and why binge eating is occurring for a person. So it almost halts the progress that you're able to make in your eating disorder recovery while you're on Ozempic. There is the added societal pressure, and I can only imagine that it's gonna get even more pressure filled in the coming years as Ozempic increases in popularity again and again, and that it's not particularly going to be sustainable for the majority of people, either for biological, physical reasons, or the cost that is associated with taking Ozempic. Again, as I said, I'm very clearly biased on not taking Ozempic, but I want to be able to give you this information because I think there is a lot of information out there about the benefits. We are getting advertisements all the time about it. The benefits are lauded completely within the media. And so I just wanted to be able to provide a different viewpoint on this and to invite you that if you have any questions or you're curious about what eating disorder recovery, binge eating recovery might look like without using one of these medications, that you're able to reach out to me. So I have provided a link in the description box down below for a free 20 minute discovery call. Happy to speak with anybody about the services that I provide and what non-medical binge eating recovery can look like. As well, if you're just looking for a free quick option, I have my five steps for ending binge eating at night guide down below in the description box for you to download now. Thank you so much for watching and if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video where I will be sharing about binge eating, emotional eating, intuitive eating, and how you can live with food freedom. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss when I publish a new video and check out these videos for more strategies and tips on your food freedom journey. I'll see you in the next video.